Well, welcome to the Phoenix College Podcast. This is Coach Cameron. I'll be your host, and I'm with me, I have Coach Eason with men's basketball and the player of the year, Jamar Brown, who just committed to University of Missouri, Kansas City. Uh, how'd that all go down, Jamar? Um, Why'd you, you pick them? You know, I really chose uh, UMKC. Uh, I really liked the relationships I had uh, with Coach Menzies, Coach Esposito, and the rest of the staff. Uh, I really enjoyed my visit. Um, on the weekend of April 14th, um, you know, I really enjoyed the campus. I enjoyed the facilities. Um, I feel like I can thrive there for the next two years. Awesome. So, Dwayne, uh, or Coach Eason, uh, give me a, a little background story of how you found Jamar and how he ended up at Phoenix College. Um, Jamar played club for um, Grassroots and his coach, um, ironically, Jack Daniels, um, he uh, introduced me to Jamar um, through an email, and I went to watch Jamar play in the McClintock Christmas tournament um, in a game they won by about 40. I knew they were going to win big. I just wanted to see how he would play in a game like that. He did well. Um, <clears throat> watched him throughout the rest of the season, and, um, you know, I got a chance to meet his mom and, and engage with her, some of her things that she wanted for him. And, you know, by the time we got to around March or April, um, he committed to us and, you know, thankfully he stayed with us through the COVID year. You know, we lost some guys during that season, but, um, you know, he stayed the course and, you know, he's gotten what we set out for him to get a division one scholarship. Yes. And Jamar, so what sold you about, uh, Phoenix college and in particular the men's soccer or men's soccer, men's basketball, uh, program here. Um, honestly, I just really enjoyed, um, and I, I enjoyed the relationship I built with Coach Eason. Um, over the years, I was um, being recruited by him. Um, you know, he came to several of my games over the years. Um, you know, he really enjoyed my play. Um, we built a strong connection, and he was really the main um, coach out of all these JUCOs in Arizona that highly recruited me. So I, I wanted to keep building that relationship, and I feel like we have a really strong relationship currently to this day. What's, uh, what's the most favorite thing you like about uh, Coach Eason? Um, what I really like about Coach Easton is he'll push me uh, to my abilities. Um, he'll push me to do things that, you know, I haven't even thought about doing. Um, I feel like he's done that a lot uh, here at PC. Uh, I feel like I can continue growing. I feel like he's set that edge for me to continue pursuing um, my career in playing basketball. So, Coach Easton, what's your, what, what's your relationship with um... – uh, University of Missouri, Kansas City, and or how that all come together where uh, Jamar was able to be identified by that university to be able to continue his playing career? Well, Coach Menzies is, um, was an assistant coach at GCU after he left UNLV, so he was familiar with um, the basketball here in Arizona. And Coach Esposito, who was his assistant, um, had just left Cesar Chavez, where he was the um, head varsity coach there, but he was previously also on staff with Coach Menzies. So they were familiar with Arizona. Um, we know some of the same people. And, um, you know, they took over the program last year. They needed some players for this upcoming season at Jamar's position. Um, and based on the relationships um, and the knowledge they had of Arizona basketball, we were able to put it together. They needed somebody that was ready. Um, so they didn't want a high school kid. They wanted a – um, they wanted to get an older kid, and they didn't really want to go into the transfer portal. They preferred to go the junior college route, and you know it was um, it, it just ended up being a perfect fit. Well, speaking of perfect fit, um, so Jamar Brown obviously was a great fit for our program. I mean, he averaged twenty two point eight points per game average. He had um, nine point eight rebounds per game. Uh, as far as those uh, statistics goes, where, where did uh, Jamar ranked in scoring and rebounds, steals? What 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 led to him uh, ultimately being the player of the year of the ACCAC? Yeah, I mean he led the conference in scoring. He was third in rebounding. Actually, was sixth in the nation in scoring. Um, and then he was one of the top ten players in the conference as far as um, three point shooting. Um, he was top twenty in the conference field goal percentage. Um, he's also top 25, I believe, top 20 at the free throw line. Um, he shot about 82% from the free throw line as well. So um, statistically, I mean, he pretty much 
you know, in, in basketball terms, you know, he, uh, from a percentage standpoint, he, he hit the lottery. You know, we, we talk about a basketball 50, 50, 40, 80, you know, 50% from the field, which he was about 49. So he was right there. 40% from three, obviously was 44%, 43% from three. And then, 80% from the free throw line and he shot 82%. So, you know, a lot of college coaches that reached out to me, you know, they would they would actually call and be like, you know, how good is this kid? I mean, his numbers are like video game numbers. And I said, no, the numbers are accurate and, and he's really good. And I think one of the biggest things that led to the player of the year is that obviously scouting reports are very important at the college level. And Jamar clearly was at the top of every team's scout as far as the guy they wanted to stop and um you know by the statistics yeah I think Jamal scored over 700 points this season alone so um you know even with the defense solely focused on stopping him um you know that that just didn't happen and even in our last playoff game you know Jamar didn't score the ball as well as he normally would have um they really blanketed him and made it tough on him but he still you know, rebounded the ball well, continued to play great defense. And I think coaches voted for him because they they saw the fact that he gave 100% and produced on both sides of the ball, um, you know, for 40 minutes. And, you know, Jamar averaged almost 39, 38 minutes a game. So the game's only 40 minutes. So he played almost the whole game every time down. Yeah, that's very impressive. So Jamar... From your freshman year, freshman year, you had 16.1 points per game. And then your sophomore year, you elevated to 22.8. That's a significant difference. What do you think attributed to that? Um, well, after the freshman year, um, me and Coach Eason, we had our one-on-one meetings. And he was basically telling me that if I want to play at the Division One level, um, I'm going to have to expand my bag. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, be able to score in different abilities. You know, that's whether off the dribble or – you know, cut into the basket, uh, et cetera, stuff like that. So, you know, during the off season, you know, I worked really hard, you know, getting, you know, finding different ways to, you know, score the basketball and, you know, just finding different ways to get open. Now, you're a multi-sport athlete. Uh, you played football as well? Yes. Um, do you think uh, playing multiple sports uh, helped you elevate your basketball career or – what are your thoughts on that? I th- I definitely think football definitely did um, help with my toughness. Uh, I definitely think it shows on the court. Um, you know, football players, you know, they, they definitely are very tough. Um, you know, they like to bang with other players, and I feel like I do that a lot um, on the court, and it shows. So, uh, Coach Easton talked about your work ethic. I mean, obviously, work ethic led to you be able to play um, almost every game at uh, says here it, even your freshman year you're 28 of 30 appearances um uh playing and then this year uh coach Eason, uh, how many did he play all games this year he played all games so, both years so, I'm so he's sure. in, injury injury proof uh <laughs> have you noticed um far as your ability to keep uh being available to play staying uh avoiding you know the kind of injuries that put you out for multiple games what do you think attributed to your health as uh, you were able to be able to play as many games and many minutes as you have played? Yeah, so, um, you know, I obviously, I, you know, I made sure I washed my body. Uh, I made sure that if I had any, you know, any aches or any little pains, I made sure uh, I went to the trainer room and, you know, got the, the right treatment I needed. Uh, you know, I always, you know, try to stretch in my off time. Um, you know, I always try to ice, uh, just take care of my body as much as I can. I might have to edit this out, but um, I didn't see you in the training room as much as others. Yeah. Um, I wasn't there as much uh, my freshman year. Um, I feel like um, my sophomore year, I, I feel like I kind of should. Um, went to the training room as much uh, my freshman year just because, you know, the, a lot of the treatment that the trainers uh, provided really helped me. And I feel like that definitely improved in my game and it showed on the court. All right, another question for you, Jamar, and then, uh, Dwayne, you can um... – I put some, uh, give us some feedback about uh, Jam- Jamar's response to this. Uh, well, can you talk about your biggest challenges you face in your uh, basketball career um, that you have been able to over overtake? And when you're processing that, um, Dwayne, uh, I'll ask you the same question, but a little different. What, what's your your biggest challenges uh, coaching um, 
coaching basketball in this day and age. So, Jamar, what's your biggest uh, uh, challenges have you faced in your basketball career? Um, I would definitely say, um, I would say the toughest would be, you know, after my freshman year, I was very, uh, I felt like I didn't have the greatest year in my freshman year. And I felt like I had to put a lot of work and a lot of, you know, effort, you know, just a lot of, just a ton of, tons of work in the off season, you know, to try and get to the level that I wanted to play at, which is the division one level. You know, I worked very hard with coach Easton in the off season. Um, we worked in, we worked on different things different areas we worked on, you know, trying to improve on my weaknesses and, you know, and just trying to strengthen all my strengths, my areas that, that I am, you know, where my strengths are at. So I would say the toughest part was, you know, trying to find, find my way to play at the Division One level after my freshman year. You know, I just working very hard the whole off season, and I feel like the sophomore year it showed that I can play at that next level. And Coach Issa, what, what what's your biggest challenges you faced coaching in general this season or in the past? What, what, what are the toughest struggles as far as coaching goes? Um, I think nowadays one of the biggest problems is is access. I think there's too many – kids has, have access to too many coaches who may not want to tell them the truth. And um, so, you know, when they come to me, I mean, I'm, I'm from North Jersey, so I'm I'm pretty in your face about – what I think you can and can't do and how you need to improve in areas and, and get better. And I think if there were more, um, I think if kids were limited in their abilities to run away from that type of hard coaching, um, I think they would improve. And I think Jamar is a, a prime example, you know, um, while we talked to Jamar about his three point shooting percentage, he shot 34% last year. And the thing that I told him was that, if you want to up your shooting percentage, you got to get your shot off quicker. And that's just, that's the difference between shooting at a higher rate uh, because you're more open versus shooting contested shots because you're taking too long to get it off. So we got into the gym, you know, we worked on a couple of things. I got him with a shooting coach to help them clean up some stuff. So Jamar never really ran from the truth. Anything I told him that he needed to get better at, um, he did that, and, and that's what, what made him a really good player. And I also think, like, one of the things that I'll say about Jamar as far as his character and also just to show how much he understands who I am as a coach, when we did his one-on-one this year, we talked about my tone and my word choice and how I get after guys and, you know, what his thoughts were on that. You know, and Jamar said, you know, Coach, you shouldn't change who you are. You know, you just need to recruit more players who are tougher that can handle hard coaching and, and want to get better. And I feel like that's, um, you know, that, that really speaks to who he is as a person because, you know, I look at Jamar as somebody who's an extractor. Like he takes the message out of the words. He doesn't get caught up in the tone or get caught up in the, the choice of, you know, colorful words that go around the evaluation. He just focuses on the message and, and stuck to the, the the important things that were going to push him forward. And I think kids who don't do that nowadays, you know, they're looking for that outlet to, you know, continue to do things the way that they want to do them instead of facing the truth. So, Jamar, to uh, go a little bit off of what Coach said, how do you plan on to continue to improve your game? Obviously, your your willingness to hear feedback, you're going to obviously get that as long as you're here at PC because I know Coach Eason likes to, to coach. Um, how are you going to continue to improve your game so you keep advancing as you head to the university level? Yeah, so obviously I'm going to take in, you know, every little detail that Coach Eason gives me because I believe that he, he's got me to this point. So I believe in the process that I believe in everything that he says. Um, I believe that everything that he says is, you know, it's a good thing. He got me to this point, to where I'm at. I'm committed to UMKC. You know, I'm just I'm just gonna keep getting you know the the right feedback from the right people. You know, I'm just gonna keep continue staying in the gym. Uh, keep working on my shot. You know, just try and find different ways to get to the basket. Find different ways to score. You know, just keep working hard and you know working on my body. You know, staying in the gym, lifting and working on my conditioning, stuff like that. Yep. Awesome. What what what's your uh most fondest memory uh, here at Phoenix College, whether it's basketball, school, what what have you? 
I would definitely say uh, this JUCO, uh, this junior college experience has been a crazy, you know, roller coaster these past three years. I'd definitely say the relationship I've built, you know, with my coaches and, you know, the, the different amount of teammates I've had these past three years, you know, it's, I would say it's definitely been great, uh, you know, meeting different people, um, you know, from different parts of the, the country, you know, what, what they're kind of, what their culture is like, you know, where, where they come from. Um, I really enjoyed the relationships I built with my teammates and the relationships I built with Coach Easton and Coach Ryan. Last question for you, Jamar. Uh, who, do you have a favorite instructor um, that helped you academically uh, to, uh, to be able to qualify to be able to go to the uh, NCAA Division One level? Um, yeah, I would definitely say my mom's a big part of my academic um, process. She's actually a, she's a principal at an elementary. Um, you know, she's very big on grades. You know, she expects uh, me and my two brothers, you know, to get A's and B's, nothing less. Uh, she expects big from us. So that's where I get all my academic success from. Who's your favorite teacher? At PC? Yes. Ooh, um, I would say, you know, any of the criminal justice teachers, whether it was Mr. Williams, Mr. Wilson, uh, Rick Wilson, or uh, Mr. Williams, I would say any of those ones. I feel like those classes were really fun, and, and I really enjoyed taking those classes. Awesome. And, Dwayne, uh, final question for you. Uh, speak about a little bit about the academic process that you go through with basketball. I know you guys are um, <clears throat> very organized and disciplined when it f goes as far as study hall and, and all all of that, even during um, uh, the COVID stretch. You did a, a fantastic job being able to uh, – keep everyone uh, functional during that time and making sure they're, they're going to study hall. What, what's your system far as uh, academic success with uh, men's basketball? Um, our success is based on one, the, the courses, the guys take um, the, most of the guys have good relationships with the professors. And it's been because we've had a lot of strong relationships in the past with those same professors. So it's been really nice um, that, you know, we haven't had a had have, we haven't had a big instructor turnover rate so our guys can continue in those same classes. Um, as far as our weekly schedule, you know, Sunday nights, you know, they have to um, submit all of their assignments for the week so that I know what they have to do um, by the end of the week. And um, on Wednesdays they come in and they have to have half of those assignments done. So we check to make sure in their canvas that they're submitted. And then on Friday they have to have all of the classes um, complete all of the class were completed for the week. Study hall is um is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Friday. It's tiered, so any kid with a four point oh to a three point five only has one day a week. Um, a three oh to a three four is two days a week. Two five to a two nine is uh three days a week, and anybody below a two five has to have four days a week of study hall. Um, and we usually make them have a tutor. So first semester, obviously, I mean, our lowest GPA was a 2.8. Um, and out of 17 guys, 15 of them had over a 3.0. And eight, six of the um, 17 had 4.0. So um, I think structure, you know, it's no offense to, you know, I hope this doesn't sound gender biased, but when boys have free time, they tend to, you know, do the wrong thing. So because our schedule is so tight knit, I feel like we're able to have success because they don't have idle time. When I first got here, guys were going to classes, getting out at, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, and then we're having practice at four. So, you know, trying to keep them corralled during those that dead period was kind of hard. Whereas now we weight lift at seven, we practice at nine, they get to, they have lunch at 11, 11, 15. And then we uh, meet in the, student center and they have study hall from um 12 15 to 2 30 um every day we don't do wednesdays um because that's usually our game day so we're traveling sometimes um so i mean i think that structure obviously i'm a i was an english teacher for 17 years so i understand how core courses work and what the expectations are so i'm i'm good at the structure piece and i got a great i've had two great um sas coordinators work with me and um, not against me. So it's been great. And who were they? Um, and it was Marty Welter who retired. Oh, yeah. And now it's um, Andy Ricky, um, and she's in the psychology department, social sciences. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it takes a village. But um, I appreciate you guys' time, and obviously, uh, I mean, those academic records are, are very impressive. Uh, you know, I would imagine throughout the country, there's very few programs uh, uh, maintaining that. But you're right, uh, young men need structure. They don't have it. Uh, they can get lost in the weeds, and there's a lot of weeds out there. So, Jamar, appreciate it. Best of luck as you transfer on to the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And uh, Coach Eason, I'm excited about uh, the prospects you'll be bringing in this next year and uh, uh, wish you all the best of luck. And we'll get this podcast out as soon as we can. Thank, Thank you. you.